Hey everybody, Sean Welch here again. I wanted to give you another quick demo of Photoshop Remote. Uh, this time, instead of demoing a lot of the filters and stuff like I did last time, I really want to focus on how people would actually use the application. I saw a whole bunch of feedback of you know, people saying, yeah, that looks great, but I don't know exactly how I would use it. So uh, here's a quick demo of you know my vision of how people would use the application. Um, and you'll notice that the screens are a little bit more uh, flushed out than they were uh, last time. Uh, so here we go, we're going to go ahead and dive right in. When the app first launches, you'll notice it looks a little bit different. Um, in the bottom left corner we have our settings panel uh, that gives us access to like the default password that's used to auto-join servers, the refresh rate, and a few other things. We have the ability to manually add a server uh, if you don't want to use the Bonjour connection, or you can manually control the discovery mode. When we turn it on, uh, you'll notice that my MacBook Air is on the network. Unlike last time, I'm not going to show you what's on my computer in the same screen because I want you to be able to focus on being able to see what's on the iPad. So here we go. I opened a file on my computer, and as you can see, uh, it brings over to the iPad just like it did before. We have the same filters. Uh, we have the same you know, panning and zooming and rotating. But all of that stuff exists in Photoshop, and people are very good about their workflows with all of that. So I wanted to focus on what we can do different, uh, and one of those things is being able to save images from your computer to your iPad. Uh, so here I just did a you know quick save, and you'll notice that the image um, was transferred over the network onto my iPad. So this would work really, really well if you wanted to quickly build a portfolio um, and transfer all of the images over while you're working in Photoshop, load up layer comps, dump them straight onto your iPad. If I open up another image in Photoshop, uh, it brings it straight over. Um, just like last time, it's the live screen, and I can save it, and it will show up on my camera roll in Photos. If you have multiple clients connected, when you save an image, it will save all of the active documents to your iPad. So if you are an instructor at the front of a classroom, and you need to save all of your students' work to your iPad at the end of class, you know, the simple save button will automatically transfer everything. We can also go the other way. We can send uh, images from the iPad over the network. And again, this is all done using the Bonjour connection. So um, I can just as easily turn off Bonjour and not have any, you know, connected clients. Uh, anything that's connected with Bonjour or added as a manual server is going to be able to send and receive. Um, so I'm going to quick open up Photoshop on my iMac uh, and show you kind of the way that this works when you have multiple clients open. So, you know, I've been sh sending this lake image back and forth. If I, you know, do send image now, uh, it'll actually open the image on both computers. Uh, if I decide to open up a different image, it will send it to both computers at the same time. So again, if you're in a classroom setting or you're at the front of a lecture hall, you can really easily, you know, push uh, images to everyone connected. Okay, now I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. I'm going to close out my Mac and uh, talk a little bit about what I think is probably the most valuable use of a live screen uh, on something that is as uh, visually appealing as the iPad. You know, a lot of photographers that I know you know, see the iPad as, you know, one of the best screens out there. And it's one of the reasons why they do a lot of their portfolio work on it. Um, so I have a lot of friends that are portrait photographers. And when they do their touch-up photos, uh, you know, the first thing that a portrait photographer will tell you is that you zoom in on the details. And then as you're making changes, you have to, you know, repeatedly zoom in and out to make sure that your images look fine in context of the whole. Uh, so, you know, if you have a big, you know, something like an iMac or, you know, a dual screen set up already, you probably already do this, but, you know, an iPad is actually a very, very good solution for being able to zoom in on your laptop while still having a full preview of what the final image will look like. You know, at the end of the day, uh, the goal of an app like Photoshop Remote is to increase uh, your workflow, not try to... Um, do things that you're already doing on the computer on the laptop. It should, you know, the iPad should make it easier for you to do things, not 
uh, harder. So the Photoshop Touch SDK is still very young. There's a lot of room to grow, and I think that you know there's a few key things that we need to be able to do in order to create you know like effective layers and stuff like that. But the Adobe folks seem really willing and able to do it, and I think that over the course of the next two or three months, you'll see a lot out of Adobe and Photoshop Remote. Remote for Adobe Photoshop will launch in the iTunes App Store in early May for both the iPhone and the iPad as a universal app. It'll sell for $1.99, and Android versions will be ready by the end of the summer. Thanks, everybody.